have taken me on quite a ride. <laughs> Jody said I get uh, frequent flyer miles. Because <laughs> I told her I felt like I, was a, I thought I was a passenger. <laughs> Good. <laughs> That's really one of the goals, I think, to make the audience feel like they're in the plane. Absolutely. Right? I'm glad that worked. Mm -hmm. It does. Right, we have speed? Ahead. Okay. Well, Robert, a pleasure to meet you and a big congratulations. What a wonderful job. Thank you. Making this flight take place, mm -hmm. flight plan. Mm -hmm. um, working with a cast like this, probably with a bigger budget than you ever had, I mm -hmm. don't know if that's right or not, to work with. Mm -hmm. Intimidation at all? Well, yeah, it's intimidating because uh, the height from which you can fall is so much greater than it is when you make a $1.5 million Small movie. Small independent film. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, it's going to get seen, so if you don't do a good job, it's there for everybody to notice, whereas if you uh, mess up a little tiny movie, it's probably going to go away <laughs> and never surface again. So a little bit of pressure there. Yes. Speaking of pressure, that makes good drama, and we have cabin pressure on a real plane, mm -hmm. and these characters that you put in this E-474, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. um, a fictitious plane. Mm -hmm they are all under a certain amount of pressure and mm -hmm. I think that's what makes for a good story. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean we wanted to put everybody sort of into this pot and then in the course of the movie increase the heat. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's a slow boil, the film, we wanted to take our time with that and we wanted to, I mean when you're on a plane and you know you can't take this problem serious yeah, yeah, she's yeah. somewhere. Yeah, of course she's probably back. I mean, who's going to jump at that? Yeah, yeah. So I think the the fact that nobody reacts for the longest time sort of makes it a little more wrenching because the whole movie is shot so severely through uh, Jody's prism, and she's the one who wants something done, and she just can't get it done. Mm -hmm. And we talked a little bit before tape rolled that uh, the audience, I felt like I was a passenger mm -hmm. on this plane mm -hmm. and the passengers were frustrated a little bit as you said a slow boil mm -hmm. and that's really what you wanted because mm -hmm. it just builds up and builds up as you mm -hmm. go along mm -hmm. yeah yeah and also um, the idea of the movie always was to as much as we could put the audience on the plane alongside with the characters mm -hmm. we never cut away from the plane we never go really to uh, you know a control tower or families on the ground or anything like that and um, I think feeling trapped like that as an audience member um, does something to you it just mm -hmm. increases the tension and you also in terms of your knowledge of what's going on you're not ahead of the characters at all you're trying to figure it out and piece it together just like they are doing it and mm -hmm. that was that was sort of <clears throat> the driving idea of how to make that movie. Jodie Foster carries the film in so many mm -hmm. scenes and uh, I've interviewed her, she said this was our 12th interview or something mm -hmm. like that today. Uh, her enthusiasm has never waned, has it? She no. just has a great passion. Yeah, yeah, she's wonderful. She loves what she does and she's tremendous at it. And also she has an, a, a real love for the filmmaking process itself. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's one thing that happened that, you know, sort of illustrates that we had a uh, gizmo on our camera to uh, focus, which was laser guided, and she had never seen it. So she looked at it and sort of started to quiz the assistant cameraman exactly about exactly what mm -hmm. that thing does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that just sort of illustrates her interest in that side of it, too. She's not somebody who just is concerned with her corner of the room. She's mm -hmm. very much interested in how movies get made, how you do something, how do you achieve a shot. Oh, what piece of equipment is that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. The confinement, did that concern you as a director, um, the fact that the set was going to be just this one airplane for most of the movie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was very concerned about that, and uh, a lot of effort was uh, expended on, you know, keeping it interesting and mm -hmm. coming up with ways to keep it interesting via changing the lighting setup. We had eight built-in lighting setups that we could uh, call upon for the main cabin. Then how can we make the various spaces that we cycle through in the course of the movie different from one another without it ever seeming that it's not all on the same plane. Mm -hmm. 
So that was definitely a conscious, a conscious sure. effort yeah. on everybody involved in that. It started with the script, really. You know, trying to figure out, okay, now we've been here for the for two scenes. Now we need to go someplace new and so forth. So that mm -hmm. was uh, from the get go uh, something that we needed to build into it. Of course, there's an air marshal that takes uh, plays a major role in the film, mm -hmm. um, played by Peter Carson, mm -hmm. Peter Sarsgaard. Um, he did, I thought, as an actor, he. He, you you tell he was serious in his job, but yet sympathetic at the same time. He right. did that so well. Right. Yeah. yeah, and that was the that was the thing that that I think we all talked about a lot, is how much do you allow yourself to engage with this woman on a human level, and how much do you have to maintain your professional demeanor. Mm -hmm. um, even you know the captain. He's wearing a uniform. He's the guy who has to make the decisions, the big decisions on the plane. Yet he's also a father of two. Yeah. How yeah. do you reconcile one with the other? And I, I hope that that's also sort of a struggle that will engage the audience because mm -hmm. hopefully that's the same thing that the audience is doing. Finally, my last question. Um, how do you feel when people are comparing what you've done as a director to a Hitchcock suspense type mm -hmm. thriller, uh, throwing your name in with Hitchcock? Well, I think there are a lot of other names that I would be much sadder about being thrown in with. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. um, I think there is not a single sort of thriller permutation that Hitchcock hasn't cycled through at mm -hmm. some point in his career, and I think he's done so brilliantly. Um, as far as this film is concerned, there are similarities to some of his work, and some there are little tiny bits in there that are also sort of an homage mm -hmm. to his work. Um, but I think solving the specific problems and making this specific engine run um, determines so much more what it looks like and what it is and how it plays than sort of trying to orient uh, ourselves on somebody else's yeah. work. So it, it's. I think when with a movie like this, it's so specific what you need to accomplish um, that that pretty much drives mm. drives all your efforts. Well, I wish there was a, a E747 <laughs> because I would take it to Berlin. <laughs> but you take this flight, flight plan, it's quite a ride, believe me. A wonderful performances, outstanding directing, and it's a story that will keep you thinking for quite a while. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank Pleasure. You.